All right, we got to keep going. So, team number three. Um, honestly, this ought to come to a surprise as no one to no one, but it is our defending champion, much to my ch chagrin. Um, so that is Robbie or Ochre Coke Pirate Party as the number three team going into coming out of the draft. So let's dig in. Twelfth uh, pick. We went for Najee Harris, 61. So a little bit, a little bit higher than what I had it budgeted for him. Just a smidge. But Najee's a bit of a unicorn. He's 6'2", uh, 230 pounds, but he's a good pass catcher. He's a, a little elusive on his feet, not super fast. But he's the undisputed three-down back in Pittsburgh on a team that will use him quite a bit and really that's what we're looking for if some of the other guys mentioned in previous videos with hannah and uh brian if for example say nick Schaub gets 215 carries and austin eckler gets like 190 carries but another like i don't know 60 receptions uh Najee might lead the league in just pure volume because it might be like 260 carries and 50 catches so yeah no he's the O-line's not great in Pittsburgh and they really like to run the ball um last year they were the past happiest team in football but that's because they could not run the ball so that's why they brought in Najee Harris before there was James Conner there was Le'Veon Bell um so yeah no they really like to have a three down back who they can just kind of throw out there who can do it all and that is Najee and volume is king so purely based on situation Najee's I got him a little outside of the top 10 that doesn't have as much to do with his talent it's more so to do with the situation I don't love having Big Ben as the quarterback I don't love having an older offensive line that is rebuilding that honestly isn't that great um, I don't love taking a running back in the first round and not having an O-line to protect him. Uh, but he's a good player. Uh, the O-line isn't the worst in the NFL, and he's going to get a lot of touches. They will manufacture touches for this man. So, yeah, no, 61 is a lot. I would prefer Eckler for 63 to Brian because he's got top five potential, whereas they think Najee is, like, borderline top ten. But... Hey, you need a running back. It's not bad. Um, we waited some time for our next slip-in with money. So at 54, we took Kareem Hunt for $21. So this is kind of where we deviated a little bit more than, um, say, Hannah and Brian. We went for budget running backs. And we went for Kareem Hunt, who plays second fiddle to Nick Chubb. And while Hunt in Cleveland ever since he was let go of by Kansas City, has gotten the ball, and he's a top, borderline top 10 running back when Chubb is out. When Chubb is playing, his ceiling is limited, so he's more, I think he's a decent plug-in player at times. He's a decent flex option. He can be borderline elite when Chubb's not there, but when Chubb is there, so I guess, you know, you're hoping... For Hannah, she's hoping Chubb's there, and for you, you're hoping he's not. But I think he can have 800, 900 yards, probably a good 40 receptions because he's the pass catcher, and Chubb's going to have like 25, 20 catches or so, um, and maybe get like 120 carries. So maybe like five, 500, 550 yards. So he's not bad. He's more of a flex play than anything else. But $21 for a flex running back to build out your depth isn't bad. I'm just more surprised you would do this before filling up your other holes at running back. But I guess, I suppose, you know, you love your running backs and you couldn't, you can't beat a good deal and Kareem Hunt's good insurance. Uh, so I can feel that. I can get behind that a bit. Uh, then again, more flex. So then we took Chase Edmonds, who's basically been in a change of pace passing down role, whether it was behind David Johnson, and, you know, once David Johnson left, it was Kenyon Drake, and now Kenyon Drake's gone, so I guess he's sharing with James Conner, 
but James Conner's been injured. So while he's been very good with catching the ball, we've never really seen Edmonds be the guy full-time for a season by himself. He's a very good pass catcher as a running back. He's one of the better pass catchers in football. I don't know if he'll be the guy in Arizona. I don't think... I think Connor's the more talented player, but you also have Connor on your team. I think it was an overpay for 21 bucks on Edmonds, because I don't know who's starting, really. I suppose getting both of them, because I you did take Connor later on, and you took him at what? Yeah, you took Connor later on, not too much later on, but you got him for like five. So taking Edmonds and Connor for 26, so basically split the difference at 13 is all right. You own the back. You own the backfield more or less, but I don't see him as too much of a uh, increase in play. I see him kind of the same way I look at Kareem Hunt. He's more of like a flex play running back. Is it good to have depth? Absolutely. And maybe you fell. It's just like, oh, you know, you can't beat the price of twenty-one bucks, which I guess I suppose I can understand that since you know he's so cheap. Again, I'm just more surprised than anything else. I think Edmonds is a good player. But we've never really seen him there the whole time, and I gotta see it to believe it. I think he's probably getting like maybe 700 yards, so maybe 150 carries, but he'll get like quite a few receptions, so maybe like 50. So again, flex territory for a kind of guy. I guess you couldn't pass up another deal. I think it's a little bit of a stretch just because I've never really seen it, but you know, maybe not too much of a stretch. He is a flex player for what he is, he's a top 30 running back or so. Um, and then I guess this was where we splurged a bit for running back. We went 28 on Mike Davis. Now, the argument is Arthur Smith comes from the Titans to Atlanta uh, to bring their run-heavy offense there, but they don't draft anyone. They actually just cut uh, Olsen, the backup, and brought in Wayne Gallman, who I think is okay. He's a guy. And they paid Mike Davis, I suppose, to be the starter. But at 28, after bouncing around from San Francisco and Seattle and Chicago to being the backup last year and having a good year for Carolina, he's now the starter in Atlanta. So he got a lot of play, though. Like, he was only so good last year because he got so much volume. I don't really know what Arthur Smith's going to do. I assume more play action with Atlanta. Uh, I suppose they might be running the ball, but then they drafted Kyle Pitts, but then they traded Julio Jones. So I think he'll get a sizable workload in the sense that he will get some passes thrown his way, but not too crazy in Atlanta. So maybe like, I don't know, 40 passes, 40 catches. He might get a lot of volume, though, just based on the situation. It's so like, you know, not Najee Harris, but we're talking maybe like 225 or so. Um I see him more as like a, uh, if the other two guys are flex in Hunt as well as Edmonds, he's probably a low-end RB2 just based on situation more so than anything else. I don't love the O-line. I don't think the offense is that great. I think Matty Ice is getting kind of old. The defense is no good, so they'll behind, be behind. I guess they can use him in the pass game. But even still, Atlanta's just not really great. But I suppose you're going to sell me on the idea that, oh, well, he's the only one there. Which is also, I like to draft on talent, not just based on situation. And I think you want a lot of situation. So, I mean, Najee's in a situation where he's going to get the ball a lot. Mike Davis is in a situation where he's going to get a ball the lot. Do I think they're the most talented players that were available when they were taken or, like, picked up? No. But I suppose, you know, they ought to get a lot of work. But, again, that's holding that Davis stays upright the entire season. And I'm not sure that he will at 28 now. He's more on the back end of his career as a running back. But I suppose, you know, 28 bucks isn't bad. Again, it's more of a budget-friendly price than anything else I'm just again surprised you went budget rather than going elite for your number two running back but again another budget running back a low end safe number two running back so now we have four running backs so far in our first five 
We have no receivers, but you know, decent, decent players. Um, again, don't love it. Don't hate it. I think 28's a decent price on him, so it's it's average. It's just everything with Mike Davis is average, just super duper average. Then we took we're starting to get into the territory I'm not really sure about. Like we took Tyler Lockett at 16. You must really like Lockett, and I understand he was the number eight receiver last year, but he was super duper boomer bust. I think he had like three huge games where he he scored eight of his touchdowns. The others, he was more just, like, decent. He was just, like, a top 40-ish receiver. I think this is DK Metcalf's team. I don't mind $16 for Tyler Lockett, but I think this is more of a conservative, safe pick than it is going for a home run, which, to be fair, I suppose, since we have no receivers, isn't bad. 16 isn't bad, but I think he's more of a number two receiver, maybe even a, maybe even a flex receiver at that. He's not great he's like a top 25 ish receiver i think his season will be comparable to last year he'll have less receptions less touchdowns but maybe more yards he got a thousand yards last year but he's not really ascending it's kind of like we're just kind of like staying where we are i think lock is a very good player um he can be a good downfield weapon i just think he's next to someone who is becoming a superstar um, we saw this happen, um, DeAndre Hopkins next to Andre Johnson. We saw it, ha- we see it, we saw it happening last year, Calvin Ridley next to Julio Jones. Um, we saw it with, gosh, you could do, I mean, we could go down the board, but you could do it with like the Steelers with, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster and Antonio Brown. Um, you could do Tyreek Hill next to Sammy Watkins. You just see the young guy figuring it out, and the old guy kind of, like, fading. And I'm thinking Lockett's going to fade. I'm not sure if this is the season he's going to go boom, but this is more of a just, like, trying to keep things consistent. And I I don't mind the value, but I don't love it either because I just – I'm not really a fan of those type of players, especially on an offense where we know Seattle wants to run the ball more. Like, you know that. You are fully aware that Pete Carroll wants to run the ball more. So you're never going to sell me on, like, oh, well, you know, Seattle, he had a good season last year, and they like to throw. They don't like to throw. That is the opposite of what they like to do. They like to run and run a lot. So I think he's going to have a worse year than last year, and last year was super boom or bust, and that does not make good for your straights. I'm not sure if he's the type of player I'd want on my team, but I guess he's your number one. I don't mind it, but he's not. He's exactly what I don't want, which is an unreliable, super boomer bust um, player. Uh, After that, five for Dak. So, Dak Prescott. Gets big contract. uh, Comes off nasty, nasty injury. He was really good when he was healthy. He was not healthy very long. What can we expect? We saw Brian take CeeDee Lamb. We saw Mari Cooper go off the board. Michael Gallup's off the board. Ezekiel Elliott went high to Sarah. The O-line's hopefully better. I think thinking what Dak did last year is a mirage because the defense was so bad. I think defense is better. I think the East is a little better, just mostly because Washington's better, and Philadelphia's got to be better than what they were last year because they were freaking terrible. But that doesn't mean that Dallas as a whole is better. Uh, but I don't think they'll fall behind those big, enormous like holes that cause them to go so pass-heavy with Dak. I think Dak will be solid. Um, considering the price for $5, it's weird. Because, again, everyone went at quarterback, I feel, almost just like, you know... Like, I felt like 8 bucks for Dak Prescott's too much. I feel like 5 is, like, kind of around where he's worth, but then Kyler went for, like, 5 too. I don't know. There was a lot of hesitance in our league to spend anything on quarterback, and I don't mind that. I'm just more so surprised that, like, someone wouldn't be aggressive and go for a young ascending talent. I think Dak is... Basically, you paid what Dak ought to be, and Dak's, like, a solid starter, and he's, like, maybe the 10th best fantasy, 8th best fantasy quarterback if he's healthy. Because he has everything else to prop him up. If the O-line's healthy, they're elite. If 
is Elliot has that O line, he'll be very good. All the receivers obviously are first round talents. So like you know Dak, but I don't think Dak has everything to succeed. But I don't think he's going to have a big, huge monster year. I think maybe forty five hundred yards, thirty touchdowns, fifteen, ten recep- interceptions. A good year, a a very good year, a, a maybe a slightly above average year. But I don't. That has more to do with like his schedule than him. So, do I hate the price of five? No. He just won't be my cup of tea considering some of the prices on the other players. That's all. I keep bringing up Jalen Hurts and, you know, Kyler Murray. But, you know, there were other players, too, that, like, I'm really high on as well that I just felt like didn't go for really anything at quarterback, which is still odd and strange to me. Like, I mentioned Matthew Stafford went for, like, three bucks. Um, I mean, freaking, what, Ryan Fitzpatrick went for two bucks. Lamar Jackson went for nine, which is a little over his value, but still, like, we're talking, like, a few dollars, dollars and change there. So, like, you know, I don't know. The league was super weird with quarterbacks this year. I don't really know what to make of it. Yeah, Dak went for five. Herbert went for six. I think Herbert's better and has more upside, but that kind of illustrates why Herbert might have gone for more than Dak, but I would have liked Stafford at three or Murray at five or Jalen Hurts at three. I would have taken all those players over Dak. So, you know, Dak's okay. I don't love it. But what I guess the thing that really sold me on the team is what we're going to get into is you went like super duper value with the whole team. So it started with Kareem Hunt at 21 and Jace Edmonds with 21 and Lockett with 16. And then you went Dak with five. And then we go into T Higgins at 11, who I like. I'm not really sure what to make of the Bengals' offense, to be completely honest with you. I mentioned this in Hannah's video. We're hoping Joe Burrow stays healthy the whole season, and I don't know if that's a healthy bet. But if he does stay healthy the whole season, I think he'll get it to the receivers, including but not limited to Jamar Chase, Joe Mixon at running back, and T. Higgins. I like Higgins a lot. He's not an elite receiver, but he's always healthy. He does a good job of using his body to go after the ball and high point it. And he plays a lot of snaps. So we like all those things. I think he can break the 1,000-yard season. I think Higgins is a solid number two receiver. He's only 22. He's super young. Like, Higgins is the wide receiver I'd want to bet on more than Chase or Boyd, just based on price. So getting Higgins as a solid number two receiver for 11 bucks, that's a steal. It's a really good deal he did there. Um, and that kind of continued that kind of theme. You took Connor at five. Again, I think James Connor is more talented than Chase Edmonds. I think James Connor, I've seen, it's been a while. It's been three years, 2000, 2018. You know, running back's agent dog years. So it's been a while, but he was the number six running back in fantasy. He's got a lot of talent. He still gets a lot of yards after, yards per carry and a yards per reception. It's just a matter of, is he healthy? Which is usually no, but Drake had a lot of carries last year. So between Edmonds and Connor, if one of them can just be the starter, you got something there. Um, I guess that's what you're doing in Arizona. You're hoping it's not a timeshare and more of just uh, one of them takes over. But again, more of a flex play. You're hoping one him or Edmonds takes the role and runs with it, so to speak. I could see 600 yards, maybe less receptions, like 25. So not super upside. That's more to do with Arizona's offense than anything else. But if one of Edmonds or Connor just takes over a three-down roll, then, you know, you're you're sitting pretty. Still, value. I think we overspend on Brandon Cooks, like – yeah, sure. Thirteen dollars on Braden Cooks. Uh, okay, you spent more on you spent less on Connor and Higgins and Dak. I mean, I guess you could say Cooks is the number one receiver in Houston, and he's been like every play, every team he's played for. So like we're talking New Orleans, New England, the Rams, and Houston. He's been like a top fifteen or so receiver. 
But uh, even if he's the number one receiver in Houston, I got a real hard time believing Tyrod Taylor is going to make Brandon Cooks an elite receiver. I got an even hard time thinking he's like a number two receiver in fantasy just because with Tyrod Taylor, again, is the quarterback. Unless you're throwing in Davis Mills and then that rookie kid is the quarterback, I guess. I don't know how he's going to get him the ball like 10 times a game. So, yeah, we're not we're not doing what we did last year. Like, that was with Deshaun Watson. That was, like, nice, like, 1,100 yards. You know, we're missing Will Fuller towards the end of the season. We're having to throw because we're behind. Like, that was nice. This is not nice. This is bad. This is going to be bad. The Texans are bad. Cooks may be the most offensive, best offensive talent on the Texans, per se, but between their committee of four running backs, Tyrod Taylor and the O-line, they're going to run the ball. So I would not spend $13 on Brandon Cooks, especially considering some of the prices on the other wide receivers going down. Like we saw, like I mentioned previously, Chris Godwin going for 17, Julio for 13, DJ Moore for 13. Like, you know, Brian took Cortland Sutton for 11. All those players, all of them, I would take all of them over Brandon Cook, simply on situation. I take talent with running back. I take situation with receivers. His situation is terrible because the quarterback does not throw the ball. The coach is bad, and they want to run the ball a lot. So, yeah, none of those things are conducive to success in fantasy. I'm happy, I guess, you got him because you like Houston, I suppose, but they are a mess. They're going to be the worst team in the league. I think they'll probably win a couple games just sheerly out of reluctance, but I don't know. I know he's starting for your team right now. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I think it's pretty dangerous, and I'm not a believer in him at all. I think you overspent on him. I... I'm not even sure if I would spend seven bucks on him just based off the situation. Um, Darnell Morey, you picked late, Mooney. Darnell Mooney, who you picked later. He's a good bet because he has chemistry with Justin Fields, and I like him. I don't think he'll have a big year. I think his breakout's coming later because the Bears got to fix their O line. Their O line's bad, and chances are Nagy and Pace will be fired by the time that happens. Anyway, next to Allen Robinson, Mooney will get. His catches, he's the deep threat. He's a speedster. He's really good at... He's very athletic. He's like a... He's not as good as Tyreek Hill, obviously, but he's not outside that realm. Uh, He's a speedster who uses acceleration to get by guys. He's a small guy, but he can really go if you can get him the ball. But... Yeah, he was like, what? He had 61 receptions, and he was a fifth-round pick last year. I don't think he'll get as many receptions just because as long as Andy Dalton's starting, you're not touching him. But he's got great upside just as a player. And even if he's kind of a small guy, he is quick. If you know how to use him, keyword if, that's a good upside play. I have no idea why you're starting two defensive ends. Instead of two linebackers, I have no idea why you took Trevor Lawrence. Who, yeah, okay, Trevor Lawrence is the best quarterback, rookie quarterback coming in we've seen since Andrew Luck. But that doesn't mean anything when the team's bad and the Jaguars are bad. I know Hannah's just like Jaguars fan, but and you know, I I suppose their receiving core with Chenault and Chark and Marvin Jones is good, and I like James Robinson, but that O line is not great, and Urban Meyer is a bad coach. Sorry, someone's got to say it. He can recruit at Ohio State. This is an Ohio State. You can't out talent people in the NFL when you got no talent. And Trevor Lawrence got no. Def- he's got no talent on defense. And he got no talent on the offensive line. I fear for his safety. If you want to start a rookie quarterback who does not run the ball, that is on your own time. I wish you luck with that. But he is not going to be Justin Herbert. He's not going to be Lamar Jackson. He's not going to be Patrick Mahomes. He doesn't have the talent around him to do any of that. So, yeah. Good luck with that. Keep wasting those uh, backup quarterbacks just like you do with Blake Bortles. Just keep keep doing that thing that you do. You are terrible at picking up upside quarterbacks. I don't know what it is. You are just bad at it. I don't know why you do it every year. You're bad at it. Sorry, but it's true. Maybe you could learn from Brian, who takes Patrick Mahomes and... You know, Josh Allen, 
I took Lamar Jackson. You you haven't in eight years you haven't taken a good like I guess you took Watson last year, but Watson's been in the league a number of to- years. You knew what he was. He was a top five quarterback. Yeah, I still think you overdrafted him, but that's beside the point. The point is taking your high upside backup quarterbacks that you take way deep in the draft never work out. It's always a wasted pick. I don't know why you do it. I would give up and just res- and just draft something else, something better. It don't it don't make no sense. Kyler Murray went for five dollars. Jalen Hurts went for three dollars. Why why is Trevor Lawrence going for a dollar? You think Trevor Lawrence is gonna be a top ten quarterback? Please, I'm not gonna trade for him. He's gonna be worthless, and you're gonna cut him by like what week four? Yeah, wasted pick. You do it all the time, every single year. I don't know why. You're not good at it. Please stop. Anyway. You're our number three team. Sorry for the rant. I think the team is solid. I think, obviously, you know, it's a little bit more little more floor than ceiling, which I'm not used to with your team. You have a lot of depth at running back, which makes sense. You're Robbie. You always do that. But I do appreciate your receivers, even if I find them to be overdrafted. I mean, I like Higgins, but Lockett and Cooks are super dangerous plays. Maybe they will pop because, you know, Lockett can be the number one receiver, but I still got a hard time believing that next to Metcalf. And Cooks maybe will be good because he's the only thing there, but I have a hard time seeing Tyrod making him a top 20 receiver when Tyrod's never had a top 20 receiver. Never even had a top 30 receiver. Go look it up. I don't know. So, But I think the rest of the team's solid. I think you got a lot to work on, uh, but considering it was an auction, it was it was a good auction for you because you just consistently got doubles. I, obviously, I know you haven't finalized the team, and you won last year. I credit that more to getting James Robinson off of free agency and helping you solidify the team and rounding it out than anything else, and I think you'll have to do something like that again to really be the champion that you were considering... I think you're further behind than Hannah and Brian than you're aware of. Um, Just because based off upside, I'm not sure about this team. But I think you're in a very good position to be a threat depending on injuries. And you obviously have the depth everywhere to take on said injuries. So, yeah, we're going to give you, if Brian's an A and Hannah's an A minus, we're giving you like a B. So, not even B plus, just a B. But you are my number three team because you had an above average draft. You just consistently did good things and you budgeted your money well and you got those value picks so good luck to you Robbie I think your team's good despite everything despite me not liking your team some of those picks on the back end and really wondering like how you're going to start Chase Young and Joey Bosa like that was a waste but whatever sure go do that I'm happy with it still be